joining us on this uh, uh, Business, Worth and Mindset podcast. So we are joined today by uh, a very, very experienced crew, uh, especially from uh, from Malawi, actually. We've got a few guys here to discuss all things uh, Malawi, corporate, business, and anything else that is uh, actually going on in the Malawi context to see, you know, just uh, what we can, you know, uh, feedback, the things that we are seeing on the ground, the things we would like to see in the future, and what uh, uh, the administration or people who will be listening to this podcast can actually take away to either implement or think about to help, you know, all people, Malawian and everyone else across the globe. So uh, we'll just do a quick... Um, uh, you know, 30, 40 second intro uh, with everyone just uh, giving us uh, a few uh, quick words about themselves, like the name, experience, what they do, and then now we'll introduce the, the topics one by one. So we'll just go around the screen as I see it. Roderick, Kama, Leo, Amos, and Crispin. So, Mr. Kalumpa, take it away. Your 30 seconds. Hi, uh, my name is Roderick Junaid Kalumpa, and I'm based in London. I am um, uh, a group financial controller for an independent uh, tea trading private company in the United Kingdom. But I also run a few charities that are involved in Malawi, um, the biggest of which is called uh, Malawi Health Care uh, Support UK, Malawi Health Care Support UK, uh, where I am the vice chairman. Thank you very much, Mr. Kalumpa. Kamamita, straight from a okay, um, back room of Malawi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Kamamita, and I'm a public health bioethicist, and I work with the College of Medicine, um, the administrator for the ethics committee. What Malawi needs right now is to build the moral capital of the individuals that's where everything is going to start. If we have a good moral capital, we'll be able to stamp out corruption, therefore build a better Malawi. So mm. I'm also an entrepreneur, part of a team that's also, we are working in investments, um, yeah. real estate, building and selling. A group of ladies formed what we call orchard properties. So we're building and then selling houses, yeah. Right. So, yeah, I'm sure you will have uh, a lot of uh, 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 tips and the uh, things that you would like to see Malawi uh, implement or come into. So that will be interesting. So, Mr. Kasote, over to you. Thank you very much, Alex. My name is Leo Kasote. I'm uh, straight from Lilongwe in Malawi and uh, uh, I'm the Chief Financial Officer for uh, Microfinance in Malawi called Express Credit Limited. Excellent. Thank you very much, Leo. Doc Nyaka, over to you. <laughs> yeah, so my name is Amos Nyaka. I'm an ophthalmologist by training. I'm based at Kamu Central Hospital in Lilongwe. I also do some private practice uh, with uh, uh, ProSight Clinics, uh, but mostly operating from the Lilongwe branch. I do not have a lot of financial background, and I think I will learn a lot from, from here and perhaps just uh, give a, uh, a view from the consumer perspective mm -hmm. of, uh, of the discussion that we will have. Uh, I think here we are, we are collecting all ideas from all walks of life, across the seven areas of life, yeah, like I specified earlier. So I'm sure we'll have some spiritual contribution we would like to see my way to go in. And spirit is not religion, by the way. So, so <laughs> about that. So, Bana Gwalawala, over to you. Uh, <laughs> my name is Chris Pitrande. I'm a lawyer by training. I specialize in human rights. I do, so, I offer support to NGOs to make sure that they, they get empowered uh, to human rights and governance. I also do issues of business and human rights. Uh, I am based at the Center for Human Rights University of Pretoria to coordinate a graduate program on human rights. So, yeah, um, 
I don't know what else to say. No, that, uh, that's, that's good. I think it, it's, it's actually good, you know, like, uh, you know, we, we, we talk in the, in the group, we know each other, but it's, it's good to just grasp that, uh, like, 30 seconds of what people are actually doing. Uh, so the, the, the first part I wanted us to, to catch up on is this, you know, if you look at uh, even just us here, yeah, going back to the good old days, yeah, we had an opportunity to, to get an education, which, which we did which was not dependent at all on our ability to actually pay or do anything and our, our you know um capabilities and everything came to fold without that if you take um that you know in those in those uh, uh times there was uh, even if it was like an 80 percent chance that someone in the village who was uh, you know intellectually able and, and had the ability and they were able to to grasp a chance either to get a scholarship or to get to a good school and be able to uh, get a good education and climb up the uh, corporate ladder and be to where most of us are like today without the actually being able to pay if you gauge the current uh, environment in malawi what are the chances that someone in the village is able to achieve the same thing that you guys and us were able to today if, if they were you know because people there there's a lot of people there who have a ability and they can achieve greater things even greater than what we guys can achieve but what is the environment now compared to before in terms of them being able to get the same chances that we guys we guys uh, uh, did get to be able to realize where we are so take it away there let's let's start with um karma for example <laughs> you saw the way I unmuted my mic. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a very, very, very slim chance that they'll get that mm. opportunity. I sit yeah. down and I tell people that, you know, we were the privileged few that had that mm. opportunity. Just yeah. looking at what people have, the kind of education system that we have now to begin mm -hmm. with, even for them to get into secondary school from a village school, it's so difficult because mm. they they literally don't have good learning yeah. environment to begin with the yeah. system the way it's been done now it's not even training them mm. for the world that it is we were privileged yeah. i mean for most of us sitting here if you see us where we are today we're in different positions simply because mm. of the background that we're given at the academy mm. we so, our so, eyes so, were open to so many opportunities so mm. right now it's difficult because somebody yeah. goes to a government school all they're doing is they're memorizing yeah so, so if I mean, somebody memorizes where they're going to get in competitive they're not competitive so it's difficult so in, that, in that sense would you say that the country has gone backwards a bit i mean do we do we get to uh, the point where yes. we say maybe kamozo had had a, a good vision in terms of progressing people uh focusing on education definitely. as an empowerment tool yes definitely it does and mm. you know african setting like what i'm saying right now if you look at what our education system does it wants mm. you to go into white collar jobs mm. which is practically impossible where are we going to get those jobs in our kind of economy we don't have those kind of jobs but there are many opportunities in vocational training if people were trained vocationally, if people's capabilities were enhanced, if people were taken to see what they're capable of doing, people would mm. have so many things to do. But if I talk to any person that's leaving high school now, the only thing that they tell me, they want to become a lawyer, they want to become a doctor, they want to become an accountant. Nobody's telling me that they want to become a tech to fix mm. televisions. They want to become mm. a tech to do, yeah. you know, to fix phones. When you think about it, those are things that are not so costly, but they yeah. be able to get enough yeah. income. How many people have television sets in their houses where they're watching DSTV or whatever? So many people yeah. want to have those things yeah. fixed in. So we mm. need to start thinking of building the, uh, a whole human being rather than just enhancing of their knowledge, which mm. not everybody is capable of. Mm. From the time when Kamuzu was there, that was the thing. We haven't adjusted to bringing learning technologies that are going with the times. 
mm. and how the students are maybe let me put it that way because most of the students if if you take your child to a private school that's what they're going to do they'll look at the full picture they're not just training them to go and work they're training mm. them to do other things so mm. we need that in our education system once we do that then people will start acknowledging what they're able to do which is what the academy i mean we had sports we had all those activities that some of you i mean alex you never did it but here you are you're hosting this whole thing why because yeah. you're given that opportunity you could see you could enhance or you're able to you're exposed to so many things so this yeah. is where we're saying we can do with the little that we have we can be able in our education system to bring in you know things that will build the whole picture the whole being i always say can we build a whole being rather than just one part of the person so when i'm yeah. looking for a school for my child yeah. i'll go for a school that's going to build that you see yeah i don't know how others look at it <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's that's quite co comprehensive and i i get a sense there that uh, there's an element of us having gone backwards a little bit in terms of uh, you know, still giving the people or those youngsters in the villages somewhere that hope that as long as they are capable and they can do stuff, then the ability to pay is not a limitation. They can still achieve uh -huh. able to go and yeah, they can. it seems to be that is quite a limitation now. Leo, what what's your take? Yeah, <clears throat> I think I concur with Karma um, on uh, several aspects and um of course, I, I know, I think in general, we, there are some things that uh, can be looked at as, opportunity, as an opportunity for, for today's child. I think we, have, we, we can acknowledge some, <clears throat> some things that have improved. For example, I think in terms of like on the governance side, but if you look at now, okay, we, might, we, we have what we call free primary education, but I think the infrastructure to support it seem to be lacking we the quality that has also affected the quality in terms of uh, the quality of teachers the number of teachers they, they even the teaching and learning materials they are they are late in school so i think to me in terms of opportunities i think in our time we had an opportunity a, a much more opportunities i think in terms of education and the earth than the kids now i'm looking at i'm tackling the aspect of quality now i think this yeah. time we seem to have more in terms of quantity and less emphasis on the quality in the quality okay uh, that's, uh, that's an interesting interesting take Bande, what's your take at the Thank you. So when we talk about the issues of education in Malawi, we need to think about the uh, environment from the framework of operating yes. in. So um, post communism, what we have noticed is that most of the systems have collapsed. So we are not just talking about yeah. education, uh, whether it is environment, uh, whether it is in climate change, um, agriculture, health, systems have collapsed. Mm. Now, education, reflecting back, you find that we had very strong systems, and in terms of education, we had the equal opportunity mm. that is from a child in a, in a, in a tier in Kota Kota yeah. to a, um, in Sanji, somewhere, what is the lowest part of Sanji? Yeah. Ma, yeah. A child in Chia and Kodakon and a child in Mara and in Sanji were more or less on footing. What we're talking about is that the quality of the training of teachers mm -hmm. at the teachers' training college was the same. They are producing the same quality of teachers that are going to the primary school. Mm -hmm. The supply of, of books, the buildings. Mm -hmm. uh, you, 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 the fact that you come from Kota Kota, this is somebody who's based uh, in Namawa in Blantyre. It mm. not mean that in Blantyre, uh, in Namawa in Blantyre, has more opportunity than somebody in Chia in Kota Kota. Yeah. Uh, uh, so the, the system then goes back, starting from the ministry, 
uh, to, to the district, that time at the district education officers, we are supervising the teachers. Mm. They could the same. Mm. We, we, the systems collapsed. So uh, we, we, and now because we are focusing on education, we, we, we came, when we look at the, the research, and, and people have written papers about it, mm. uh, we introduced free primary school education. Mm. But at the time we were using primary, uh, free primary school education, we had not properly prepared what kind of infrastructure was there, what needed to be improved. And then, um, in terms of the recruitment of, 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 of uh, children or pupils or students, we did not analyze how much our infrastructure would accommodate, how many teachers were there. Now, you, you find that in 1994, politically, they said there's need of free primary school education, but mm -hmm. the infrastructure had not been properly analyzed and prepared for that. Then, statistically, the numbers went up. And then there was a uh, the lack of materials, lack of teachers. Mm. That at that primary school level, the standards went down. At the same time, we introduced opportunity for for private schools. We, we saw an expansion of primary uh, uh, of, of prim private education uh, system. Mm. That system was also not prepared to fit in in the public system. As a result, everybody who had a small house, a three bedrooms house, six bedrooms, it was just school. And we said, no, it is fine. Then we also saw a system where the private school, the standards were even lower. Then we became confused. And in the, in the midst of confusion, and also lack of time even to stop things, because we had an opportunity to say, hey, I think we have rushed too much. I mm -hmm. think we are making standards go down. We did not. We started pushing things, trying to do class programs. We found that people who had JC being pushed to teach in primary school. When in, during our time, those teaching in primary school had at least a high school certificate of education. Mm -hmm. Now, the course of that, they are trying to push some teachers to go for training. Some of them were not going for training. In the course of the, some of the teachers became ghost workers, some of German teachers. Then all the standards just went down. Now, after that, what we've seen that over the years, you start analyzing from that time even to this time, you find that the cost of the students at that time in the standard eight level. Mm. You can't now. You find that the quality is a bit lower in terms of comprehension, asking questions, analytical skills, uh, the things that they're dreaming about. So we, we, we made systems collapse. And I'm saying it's not just only in education. We talk about health. In that yeah. time, this, this this discussion cannot be uh, cannot be done in isolation because when we're talking about systems it's like the government because of multi-party or because of trying to please people or not caring at all we would not put in systems and then in recruitment promotions everywhere in education yes. so in terms of education now we see this situation where the quality of the students is not good the buildings the materials and then the product. Because of that, we find that even uh, our neighbors and even at, uh, at regional level and international level, they started questioning our qualifications, our post camus Now, they tolerated during Bakiri Munoz's time, but also during being certain countries now where we're trying to, to, to introduce uh, soft evaluation in terms of the qualification from Malawi, we're trying to check, can we check your certificate whether you're properly qualified? We saw that in, in UK, trying to, because at that time during Kamuz, the qualification you had in Malawi was equal to something else in UK. But now they're trying to question whether a diploma in Malawi means a diploma in UK, degree in Malawi means degree in UK. I mean, countries like South Africa that have actually established a South African quality, uh, a quality assurance authority, just mm -hmm. to make sure certificates that come from, from outside South Africa are assessed because they have realized that in certain countries, systems have collapsed. So that reflects the quality of education. So we have lost as a country uh, over the years because probably we don't prepare a post kamuzu The systems that collapse have a reflection now. Uh, we see that in the quality of those, those of us who are the privilege to make assessment. I mean, teach at college level, at university level. In Malawi, we have seen. The, I mean, we, we we were students before. We saw also our friends, uh, our brothers, our, our aunties. They were students and graduated. We'll see what they would be able to do, what the current students could do. And then we also go to the papers that have been written. Uh, this proper, proper research done by institutions like Malawi Institute of Education. We find that we have good problems. So, 
change, but probably systems collapse after change. Yeah. Wow. Uh, now to, to public servant, Mr. Ngala, just give us your 30 seconds. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> No, I, I don't have a, a long introduction. I'm Gibson Garamira. I'm CEO of Press Trust. Uh, I am a development practitioner. Really, uh, governance is what I breathe every day. Uh, results is what I look for from my people every day. Yeah. And, the, uh, you know, project management is what I do every day. So, really, if you're looking at me, you're looking at your public servant. Yeah, who really wants to make change yeah. to those that are less privileged than ourselves, you know. Thanks. Um, you know, uh, we've worked together with Daniel, mm -hmm. he knows that he, you know, our <laughs> demand <laughs> that he gives me a dividend which I can channel to some people in GTPAS, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so so that's who I am, chair, and uh, Okay, and I, love, I think I love my work. Yeah, I see that. Uh, <laughs> it looks like the leadership hasn't grasped that vision of uh, the the uh, the institutions, certainly from an education point of view, that are going to be key and crucial in in getting uh, people educated and those those systems. Because in a way, those uh, systems and institutions they are the ones which uh, take a long time to build. So you must have as a leader a vision that we need to build this thing even if it's going to be stuff that you're going to build beyond your lifetime but you make it start but uh, it, it I, I get a sense that a lot of the leadership that has come in has has had a, a short-term vision of just uh, you know the five years just for me or for us what can we do what can we achieve rather than having like a a 50 year or 100 year vision of building like institutions like Camus did to build Kamu's Academy, to build SAP, that uh, people are going to be institutions that will take, uh, educate people for years and years to come beyond the lifestyle of those particular leaders. So that's what I, I'm getting to. So Dr. Nyaka, what's your view on, on uh, that? Can I jump, Dr. Nyaka? Okay, yes. Yeah, I had things itching when uh, Council <laughs> Suwande was uh, speaking. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Chair, I'm a development practitioner myself. Yeah. Uh, actually, I have the privilege, uh, maybe, uh, to relay to my colleagues that uh, for those of us that were at Kamsa Academy, yeah. I came to realize much later that the institution I'm working for today mm -hmm. is the one that used to pay for our school fees. Ah. Okay. So I do know quite a bit of uh, of the intricacies of what uh, a development yeah. or the development landscape should look like for our country. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, um, what I've what I've realized so far, uh, I am I am a social worker. I normally tell people I'm a development practitioner. I'm a social worker. Because my job really is to support the social economic development efforts of the country. Mm -hmm. So uh, on the on this particular question uh, that council I think he was emphasizing on, I have this tech, a very brief tech to to contribute. Yeah. You know, I'll give you a few statistics. Uh, you see, today for kids that start standard one, only 16% of those kids who transition to secondary school, 16%. 16 out of 100 kids will access secondary education. Mm. What are the factors there? Yes, we can talk of culture in some places, but access and quality are paramount in those areas. We can expound those those matters later. Mm -hmm. For those kids that indeed have the opportunity to go to secondary school, those 16%, out of them, mm -hmm. only 8% have got the chance to transition into any form of higher education. I'm talking of universities. I'm talking of uh, uh, colleges or or, you know, technical colleges, you know, 
any form of higher education, only 8%. And if you start breaking down the numbers, then you will realize that we've got a serious challenge. Yeah. If you break down those statistics further, you find that women are at a much bigger disadvantage than men. And therefore, I'll submit as follows. For me, I think we have lost the sense of public service yeah. in this country. We have built a system, a three-tier system mm -hmm. of inequality. When we were growing up, we, our generation, we had an equal chance of accessing mm -hmm. the kind of quality education that we went through at Kamsa Academy. Yeah. Today, I can guarantee you, there is no that, such opportunity. So uh, actually, we in the leadership positions are also complicit in this thing. I'll give you an example. Mm -hmm. You have got a ministry of education, for example, mm -hmm. that has got leaders there. Ask them where their kids are. They will not send their kid to a public primary school yeah. because there is no education there. Yeah. And these are the people you have entrusted to manage your education system. <laughs> in those days that we grew up, we had ministers I can pick up my learning with us. You know, these points that I'm, I'm putting across, the people believed in the system. If you had Chokankanas in Area 12, all ministers' kids and the kids of your guard were going to the same school in those days. Mm -hmm. The same quality of education. Today, we've got a three-tier system. If I'm a chief executive like I am today, my kids will go to this school. Uh, mm -hmm. If I've got my employee who is at this grade, their kid will go to that school. If if I've got now my maid and whatever, their kid doesn't matter. They will go to wherever education is found, you know? It is that sense of public service that we have lost in this country. And therefore, I'm submitting that we should go back. We should rebuild the system so that indeed the private institutions that we tout to be private institutions offering quality education today should be relevant. Government should come on top, you know, providing services that will be far much superior than what the private sector is doing. We did that before. That is why we're in these positions that we're, because we had equal opportunity. We cannot say the same of those opportunities that we had. And we're all testament to that uh, system that was there. And therefore, that's why, Chair, I was itching to say, you know, we must, and we must, you know, make sure that as public servants today, I am a public servant, we yeah. must make sure that we contribute in our small, we are leaders in our spaces, little, yeah. little corners that we sit, we are leaders. Let us make sure that we provide equal opportunity, the same opportunity that you'd give your kid to provide it to the to someone, as as Council was saying, in Maka, in Sanche, mm. we should be providing same opportunity. And yeah. that is what public service is all about. Yeah. I can stop there for now. Wow. That's uh it seems to me the, the issue and the problem is even much bigger than I thought before. Then things seem to be going in an entirely opposite direction to where we should be. Because as uh, human beings, whether in ourselves from a personal point of view, our personal point of development, our families, our communities, our countries, as time goes by, you expect to be developing, like going forwards rather than going backwards. We seem, I'm getting a sense that we are going the opposite direction which is quite worrying in a way, but uh, we'll, we'll get to, uh, because at some level the administration and the people who are responsible or are in positions where they can effect, effect change, will get to listen to this discussion and this podcast. So hopefully we can have some takeaways which your people can have. But my, my view and my sense is now being that as people in, in, in administration and in, in uh, positions of power where they can effect change, they need to have this long-term vision of where things should be rather than just short-term vision of just me and my family, uh, you know, my kids, as long as I educate them, you know, 
who cares about somebody else it's just like every man for himself that is what is taking us down but uh, i guess there's also maybe questions I, I i guess this topic is is much wider i think we can go on and on and on i mean because i'm i'm thinking of uh, questions of uh, kamuzu being a life president he had time to implement a lot of things so he could think 20 years i will build an academy i will educate people but someone who is coming for a five year term after five years you know they're going to go out you know why would they build uh, something massive that will take the country to 100 years or, or whatever they're just concerned in now but i guess there's pros and cons across all these uh, debates and discussions so Dr. Nyaka, what's your view so far on discussions? Uh, I think the previous speakers have um, uh, spoken well yeah. uh, in terms of uh, certain aspects that were, that would do, uh, you know, uh, answer yeah. your, your issue. I think I think for someone in the very rural areas to have the same opportunities that we had, I think the answer is, is very unlikely. Uh, at this stage, uh, because if we think if we think of the, the best primary schools, I think as as uh, as Banangalamira uh, uh, has already indicated, we those in in in, in our in our uh, our age bracket kind of do not trust the, the the public sector. I mean, we would not be comfortable to send our our own children yeah. in a government primary school, our own children in a government secondary school. Uh, perhaps we'll use our uh, public uh, universities uh, or even if, if we are able to even send them outside uh, Malawi. It, it just all boils down uh, to what everyone else has spoken, that our systems have not um, uh, kept pace uh, nor have they improved to you know to match the increasing population. I think it's, it, it, it's quite hard uh, to understand that by now uh, we cannot have enough spaces to, to you know to accommodate all uh, qualifying uh, form four students in universities in public universities. I think that's very deplorable. Uh, I mean, I mean, it's, it's very it's very painful uh, when you hear other countries that they are able to build four five universities within a space of three four years. I mean, why can't we do it in Malawi? I mean, why why certainly why why? I mean, that's very de deplorable. So I, I think I think I think when you talk about the chances of someone in the rural village in um, in Palombe or, or or in Milkoma having the same opportunities like what we had, uh, I think it's the chances are almost not there at all. Uh, I think I think I can stop. I can stop. Mm -hmm. that. I, but I like the statistics that um, that uh, Gibson has uh, brought forth. Yeah. That really tells you uh, that uh, uh, we don't have our priorities right. For this country, there's no way you should be having uh, less than 20% of those that go to standard one finishing standard eight. Yeah. I mean, that's unacceptable. And even those that go into university, I mean, to secondary school, having a chance to go to university, uh, mm -hmm. having less than 10%. I mean, these two are quite deplorable. Mm -hmm. So it, it all it all boils down to uh, to the issue about uh, the progress that we've done in education in general. Uh, 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 the systems that Crispin has talked about, I think we haven't built on those. Uh, I think I would, I would stop there. Yeah. Wow, that, that, that's really interesting. I'll, I'll, co I'll come to, to Roderick now. I think we, now the picture is becoming quite, quite clear of, of the issues. Now, I pose a, di a different question. Is, is, what is the, the cause of this? Because if you look at the people who have uh, come through, either in administration or in these uh, uh, ministers or whatever, I don't think they are they are necessarily not educated people to understand what is required, what is needed for a country to progress. So why is it that these people haven't taken the right measures? Is it because even for them, they have the vision, they have the ideas? Is it uh, the, the people you know they are working with who haven't got the same vision and they can't implement? Why is it? Because I'm, I'm sure, I mean, if you look at, I mean, uh you know bakili uh if even uh um mutarikas you know uh, they are very educated educated people who understand the the things that we are talking about now but why hasn't anything happened yeah what's your uh, take Rodri? 
Well, I think um, I think first of all, I agree with most of what uh, my colleagues have said, and the statistics that have been um, thrown by the uh, CEO of Press Trust, um, Gibson Galamina, are very startling, and they should be. I wish many people were privileged to actually know these statistics. I'm sure mm -hmm. if any Malawians found out that only 16 percent of those who start in primary schools they don't get into secondary school not not not, not university but secondary school yeah. no can we we correct that i think what what we're saying is that those that standard start standard one yeah. yes. only six percent have the chance to go to university i mean to secondary school secondary school okay okay but, but, but if you need those, from those 16 only was it eight or even make it eight eight percent of the 16 right yes it's eight percent of the 16. that's shocking yeah. that is, i think yeah. it's about seven percent actually seven percent of the 16. yeah yeah is the, so, are the ones that are actually going to university okay no thanks for uh making me understand even further which is um is is even more depressing now alex coming to the issue of um why is it that we're in this sorry state for me mm -hmm. Uh, much, uh, I mean, like um, the background has been given, you know, by Crispin, where he said, um, uh, you know, failure in the uh, the systems collapsing and all those kind of stuff. And uh, but also the main cause is um, he touched on something where he said, uh, when we tried to liber to you know, like when we went into multi-party democracy in 1994, everything came free for all, you know. So the first the first point of contact where we need to look at is the leadership. You know, when Bakili Molozi came, we thought, oh yeah, now we are free to do anything. I can open uh, a three bedroom uh, house into a, a private secondary school, as he put it. So it's the leadership that has to, first of all, take ownership for what we have had. Because if Kamuz keep the standards as they were for 30 years, there is no reason that now over 26 period, 26 year period, we should wipe out all the gains that we made over uh, uh, 30 years. You know, obviously people are going to say, but Camus was a dictator, but Camus was not uh, operating in an era where technology was there. You know, today, if I want to call my grandmother in Domasi, I'll be able to do that. Camus had to take two weeks to send a letter from uh, Kasungu to reach uh, maybe in Sanje. You understand what I mean? So this reason, saying that you know like things were easier for during the times of Kamuzu so we could keep the standards of the schools and the systems intact and all that for me it's gibberish and it's just run away from running away from the responsibility that leaders should take you know uh, I'm talking about everybody from Bakili to Bingu to Peter Omtarika and now uh, we are yet to assess uh, President Lazarus Chakwera. Now mm -hmm. second well, uh, much as the leadership has got uh, so much of the blame at their doorstep, but we as individuals as well, we have played a, a part. I feel like the Malawians of today, we are not as patriotic. You know, our generation, it, it's more of what is it that I have as Roderick Kalumpa than what we have as a unit. You know, you, you, you get what I mean? There is competition to me to outdo uh, Amos or do better than Gibson, instead of knowing that, look, if all of us are successful, you know, as, as a community, we all do better. The people who have done, I mean, we are the leaders now, you know, we have got CEOs here, top human rights lawyers, top doctors, and all those kind of things. We think about ourselves more than we think about the common man, the poor man in the village. So this tendency, to say that okay it's um me alone so i can i can do whatever i need to do so that my family and my immediate people are okay leads to corruption you know because i don't care about whether the drugs are not in the hospital as long as i have banked the check which i was supposed to uh supply the medicine to the hospital you know, now this chain goes into education, it goes into, so we have become corrupt minded people. I mean, we can start talking about get and all those kind of stuff. So Alex, to answer you, yes, the leaders have got, um, they've got so many to answer from Bakiri Molozi, Bingwam Tarika, his brother, uh, and the current one, of course, Joyce Banda, but also us as individuals, as custodians of our organizations that we run, 
we have so much that we need to answer for for the future generation because that's what we're destroying uh, Malawi for. Hmm. Chair, Chair, um, if I may come in uh, just yes. to support my brother. Yes, sure. Uh, I guess I'm making up time because I was late. Uh, actually, for me, I think he, the key question that uh, I think Roderick has posed, mm -hmm. uh, I think we should be answering ourselves. I think our generation still thinks that there are leaders elsewhere other than us. I think that is a very big, a very fundamental uh, error. We mm -hmm. are leaders today. I don't complain that a leader hasn't done anything elsewhere. I have to do it. If I see that things are not happening elsewhere, what is it that I can do? In my little corner where I sit, yeah. what is it that we can do? I will give you examples. You know, the people that laid the foundation of this country we are much less educated than us. I like a band just had a, a from four or a, an all level qualification. Mm. The ministers, if you if you check the ministers that were surrounding Kamus, they were much less educated people. All what they had was that we want our kids to go to a good university. We will therefore embark on building a university for our kids. We will therefore embark on building a, a Queen Elizabeth for our people. We therefore embark on building Kamus Academy for our people. We are leaders today. We are much older, 40 years plus. We are not young anymore. We should be the leaders that we, we should take the mantle ourselves. We should demand, we should demand that we do these things. Yeah. And we shouldn't look for favors. Mm. We shouldn't look for favors. That's why I was saying at the beginning, gentlemen, that we should have the sense of public service. Public service is selflessness. What resources do we have at our disposal that we can enhance our communities with? We should be looking at a community that is prospering together. That is what uh, the example that we are, all of us, at Kamus Academy where they took kids from all over the, world, uh, the country that, were, that had no hope at all mm -hmm. to prosper together. Yeah. We are the leaders that should be making these things happen. If I hear anyone saying that, oh no, we're looking for leaders, Chakwera or whoever, we are the leaders today, even Chakwera, who will not write a board paper, will not write a cabinet paper. It is us who are writing these board papers, who are doing procurement, who are doing it. We should be there to, to develop ourselves. Mm. Let us not uh, uh, you know, keep blaming each other. Excuses don't make us heroes. Yeah. Wow, that's a uh, very powerful, uh, Mr. Garamira. That's that's uh, that's really that's really key. And uh, I think what I would add on that as well, I think, is the collaboration of us because as individuals, yeah. For you, you know, Mr. Garamira, that's one day, as individuals, if you are just in your own corner, you can't achieve much. But if we come together and collaborate as a movement, yeah, we can do a lot. Yeah, we can do a lot. But we, we are lacking those people to stick us together, yeah, in a way that, uh, you know, we become a kind of, I mean, there's a, a lot of examples today, like, you know, just the uh, uh, the seven of us who are, who are here today, if we are to establish something, for example, that we agree, we do something, and we have one person amongst us as a leader who will be, uh, collaborating it, taking it forward and doing it. There's a lot of us we can buy into it, whether it's something that we should contribute, whether each one of us have got different skills. Either we, some will contribute financially or do something, but something can happen. I think that that collaboration to do something, I think is, is, is uh, for me, I see that as lacking quite, quite a lot, you know. So if, for example, to pose a, a, another question or in a different way, yeah. We are sitting here, us as, as, as leaders, yeah, because things are, are where they are now, yeah. We have to reverse the trend. Sorry, Chair, there's something that's itching that I want yes, to okay, see. Yes, okay, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, okay, things. Things. So, there's something that's burning in my heart, so I want to go my okay. heart. Yes. All right. So, whilst I, whilst I, I agree with the Gibson's view that we are all leaders in our own uh, corners, uh -huh. but I think we need to re really focus 
on who should actually lead in the visions that all of us aspire that Malawi should have. So we cannot actually, you know, take away the responsibility that the people that we want to lead on our behalf, because when we we elect, you know, people in in those trusted positions, we want them to, to you know, to lead on our behalf, fulfilling our aspirations. I, I think we cannot uh, we cannot say that our leaders, um, uh, those in higher positions, have, have not uh, are not to blame. I will still want to stick to them, because I think these are simple things that they would say. Uh, they want maybe. And 80 percent of those primary school students that go that start st standard one should be given an opportunity to go to secondary school and the answers we, we have those answers and if the head of state for instance has that as his wish we should be able to achieve yeah. if we're saying fine within three years we we'll build or we will increase our our university public university intake by 10 times why should we not do that why should gibson and me be struggling to achieve that we actually we can be able to achieve that me and gibson but through the taxes that we pay because now we've elected someone else to, to help us achieve that aspiration you see when when we we we, we when we have that kind of leadership uh, and we're able to, to work towards those aspirations then me and gibson and crispin would also do our part in order to help in that vision that we all collectively share so i don't think that we can say that our leaders are not to blame for that reason but i agree with him yes we are leaders in our little corners thank you but in our little corners we can take ourselves and go banging on that door every day to, to get them to do what they should be doing yeah you know if we have our little initiative that's our leadership we are taking and we won't take no for an answer we want those institutions we want those education. as we bang and bang and bang eventually they'll get the message and they'll do something or they'll even say okay what do you want to do? Take the leadership yourself, who will support you, or me as president or minister, whatever, I'll back you up, or whatever. And then that's why we take the initiative and the, the leadership. I, I think uh, unfortunately, way. most of us would never dare, would never dare uh, take that responsibility. No, I want to be honest with you. The people <laughs> that have, even in the last uh, uh, 12 months or so, that have yeah. gone to demonstrate to demand their rights have yeah. not been people like gibson and me who mm. have some white collar jobs no yeah, yeah. Mm. so so let, let us not assume that because we have these uh, opportunities then we have ultimate leadership no the people yeah. that have okay. Thanks for your teaching i want to hear from yeah. you know, what, what i want to do i want to yes. try to put the rules from uh, Roderick, gibson and yank and one pot mm. Let me start with Nyaka. It does not mean that to fix the country, all of us should be in the streets. Uh, I think if we try to analyze one or the other, maybe all of us have played a role in the last 12 months. We, we don't have to go in the streets, but what did you do? But let me go back to the point that Rodrik addressed. I, I, I think there's been a problem in Malawi that post Kamuzu, we were a society that loved being oppressed. So we, we, we need to be very clear that Bakini oppressed us systematically by making sure that we are poor, backward, and he made the systems collapsed. But what did we do? We gave him 10 years. And he was actually pushing for more years. But look what we did. We, we, we almost gave him uh, a, pla a, a place to do that until one clever guy, one of some pass did it by 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 saying no the third term bill did, did not pass i am not going to say whether the bill passed or not but he played a role but it's not only him but we were the time where we blocked him that he wouldn't go further but then we go back to the point that uh, gibson was he was talking about there are many of us maybe not the, maybe not now but there are many people who supported baki because they never wanted the systems they wanted the system collapse why were people not not patriotic enough to make sure that Baki went anywhere because he, he was pulling the country down and the what were being held in hands for him. Now it has been the system since Baki that he came came bingo. His first speech at Kabul Stadium, he promised that that land of Wuhan and Mirik and everything else, where there was a way that systems were going to be put in place. He messed up the country. I mean he he's gone he even died then somebody comes in joyce banda what did we do okay we, we removed him from power 
Then comes uh, uh, Peter Mtanika. What we have done? Okay, we have removed him from power. Maybe we are trying to fix things because if you look at the system that we are trying to talk about, there the, the is an echo of voice that we have not been happy with our leaders. I think that we should accept that throughout, we are. If you look between 2001 to 2004, they were quite intense. People rejected the fifth term, rejected the open term. People told back in that you messed up the country. But you see, there was there was a, there was big corruption in the Ministry of Education, 187 million. The question is, have we needed going further to research to recover to, to find out if we recovered that 187 million? But when we talk about the leadership, we're talking about the the, the leaders that went back to the point of Amos. When we talk about politicians, they provide the policy environment. How do they appoint people? Do they appoint qualified people? We are talking about education here. Our country has enough education experts. When you talk to them, understand the problem. They tell me, we understand. We understand that our, the training curriculum is not okay, the recruitment of teachers, the, the promotion, because we are not rewarding people who are working hard. We are, we are rewarding bootlickers and handcuffers. Those are the people who go to the office and collapse the country. And what we do, we smile. This is what Gibson is saying, because it is us who smile at, at, at those things when we are seeing things go. And we are there saying it's fine. Things when things are wrong, we need to rise up. Now, right now, you find that in, most of us we are in the leadership position. This is now I agree with it, Gibson. We are we are leaders in our own way. We are leaders in the medical profession, we are leaders in IT, we are leaders in human rights, we are leaders in development in social work. But then how much are we making sure that we make politicians make right decisions? We push politicians to make right decisions. There's an opportunity now that we've got a new president. The question is, are we pushing him to make sure that he strengthens the system that collapsed? We are the people compared to other countries. Probably we are one of the strong countries when it comes to governance. Our friends find that for the past 40 years, they've had maybe one president. We are that the sixth. So we are trying to question the politicians, but then, what else are we expecting? To How much are we pushing them? And, and in our own way, as, as Gibson has said, it's time we love the country. Because today we are pushing to send kids to private schools. But what happened to our kids? We are also driven that they'll send the private schools. Why can't we fix the country? So it is time we should rise up and fix the country as we, the today's leaders, because all of us are in leadership position. So in one corner, we must push that corner to make sure the whole force, we should make the whole force so that we fix the country. Because as of now, we are the people that are running the country at technical level. But at technical level, we can influence change at political level. That's what I wanted to say. Welcome, uh, um, Mr. Dunga. Welcome to the, to the show. <laughs> and, Thank you very uh, much. Well, Sorry, <laughs> that, that's okay. That's okay. Um, yeah, we just just to give you a, a just a, a quick uh, uh, sort of overview of where we are. We are just talking about uh, the opportunities that uh, currently are available in Malawi for someone who is in the village. They have nothing at hand, but they have the capability and potential to do well and become, you know, like a lot of us have become now, where the the ability to pay was not an issue but we got a good education went to Kamuz academy and we progressed and we are here what are the chances that someone sitting in palombe in some village somewhere is able to achieve the same things here so we are going around and uh, talking about what has gone wrong you know how the systems has collapsed the education system hasn't been maintained and it's collapsed and uh, people in leadership positions are sending their children to private school and you know, because they can understand that the current institutions are not fit for purpose and all that kind of uh, uh, state. So, right. No, I'm Daniel Dunga. I worked 15, 16, 17 years in the corporate world in Malawi. I currently work for the Nico Group. I focus on investments management, so managing people's money. But before that, I worked in the uh, regulation space managing a body of accountants yeah so really i'm a finance person uh yeah. but maybe 
I can throw in governance to just to make it sound nice. <laughs> the view now is that uh, it is very difficult for someone sitting uh, out there in the village to, to be able to achieve their potential uh, to the same level that we did for us who went to academy because the, um, the, the current environment is not conducive to that. What, what, what is your take on that? Do you think something has gone wrong somewhere that, uh, you know, kids and people uh, haven't got equal opportunities? If you go to the north or the south or Sanjay, Chitipa, everywhere, and those kids, they, they literally haven't got the same opportunity that we had to be able to realize their potential and their ability because they are the you know being able to pay was not a factor what's your take on on uh, that topic and what has gone wrong if anything no thank you very much it would have been nice to hear what everybody else has already said but uh, <laughs> i hope i will not okay. contradict anyone to say the truth when you look at the current discourse at the moment when you people talk about where the opportunities lie. People do mm. talk about the comparison between being employed and running your own business. So em employment versus entrepreneurship. And mm. the message seems to say that entrepreneurship is the way to go, mm -hmm. which is correct, but there's a big but there because some people understand it to mean that you don't have to waste your time chasing an education and chasing a yeah. career because you can go straight into making money yeah. by entrepreneurship. Yeah. Meaning that people have elevated the importance of money over education. education. Mm -hmm. I would like to say that, uh, yes, if you want to make lots and lots and lots of money, entrepreneurship could be the way to go but you cannot do that at the expense of education. You cannot say, therefore, education doesn't matter. Mm. I think education is still very, very important. And if you look at us that are here, maybe I should be speaking for myself. We don't have generational wealth where our families handed over money to us. Mm. You know, uh, for most of us, maybe the first. The first car in the family is the one we bought. You know, the, the first air ticket in the family was the one that you know we used to fly out of the country. So we're we are like, you know, we are like the star of the family because our families are coming from a background of real poverty. Yeah. And if, if it wasn't for education, if it wasn't for an opportunity to pursue. Uh, some qualifications, our lives would have been the same. Our lives would not have changed. Mm -hmm. Now, the moment we say everyone chase money from day one and, you know, don't pursue education, you're really breaking a window of opportunity for many people. Mm -hmm. So I would like to still say that in as far as there are not many families that can hand over money to their future generations, they think that they should be hand over to them, should be some decent education. Mm -hmm. And at that level, it's a state responsibility. It's the country, it is the government that should educate its people. The mm -hmm. model that Kamuzu did to say, let me build a real good school and yeah. let me give a good opportunity to the smartest people, competitive, and if they make it, you know, let's give them the best possible education. And you find that once one person has been changing that family, then it changes that family. Uh, so the lack of investment in education at the moment is very, very, uh, is very, very worrisome. That even the university education, people don't seem to invest in it as much as they should that breaks future generations. So I would like families, governments, corporates, press trust to really, you know, look at uh, investing in education in a serious way to say this is something that can transform, that can change people's fortunes in a big, big way.
Mm -hmm. Wow, that, that's uh, pretty much uh, spot on in line with uh, everything we've been discussing so far. So it looks like uh, the view and the feeling is sort of uh, universal and spread out across uh, everyone pretty much. So uh, I'm, uh, I'm sure Karma is itching to, to say something. You haven't uh, said <laughs> something. So uh, we, we've talked about uh, uh, the, the issue now that we seem to have been going backwards rather than forwards. We've talked about uh, uh, the leadership where the, the vision, the long-term vision to invest in these infrastructures hasn't been there. Yeah? And we've talked about some of the reasons. There's short-termism. You know, if you look at Kamozu, he was like a life president. He could have that vision to build something that will serve people for hundreds of years or generations. Someone coming in here, you know, he's got five-year terms. He's just looking at what can I do for me or my people or whatever, because in five years' time, I'll be out. That's a separate debate as to, you know, whether that actually makes a, uh, a someone uh, invest in something long-term or not. So that, that's probably a different topic. But uh, going up to Kama and Leo, if, let's say, take the scenario, you guys got an into power tomorrow, yeah? What would you do to reverse this trend? What would be your vision and what are the things that you would want implemented or you would put into place to make sure that this trend is reversed? What are your thoughts on that? Hmm, that's a good one. I mean, hmm. listening to what Gibson has said, which is also in line with what I've been saying about, you know, the moral, moral capital, yeah, and patriotism. That's what we need. That's a starting point. In ethics, we say when you have a problem, you need to look at the root cause. You do a root cause analysis. And that, this is what we need to do. And we've seen that it's, I mean, we say government. I mean, Gibson's continuously say, we are in leadership, but who's government? Government is the people and we are the government, when you think of it. So if we invest ourselves as individuals, and put it upon ourselves that I'll take on this responsibility to ensure that things are being done the right way, things will go the right way. And this is what we've seen in the past 12 months. Where we are sitting today is because people took it upon themselves. They decided to say, we can do something. I must argue to say, all of us sitting here probably didn't do a lot. People did in different ways. You don't need to go out there and say, well, this is what I'm doing. You can do it in the background, and that's where actually a lot of influence comes from. When you're talking to people, when you're making people understand what's happening. Because I think when we went into multi-party democracy, as Roderick had put it, people went all over. And I always say government of Malawi has the best systems in place. They're still there, it's just that people don't do it. There's still people who are waking, who have those policy documents written, where they're not being pushed. What we want now is to say, let these things not accumulate dust. Can we please see these things, evidence being taken into and being utilized? Because when you have evidence and then utilize it, then it makes sense. Right now in the field, it's always about, you know, policy coming from evidence-based policy making. So if we're going to say, if we're going to change where the education system is right now, is that everybody should, we should start off as individuals to understand, because even as a teacher, I teach in a public institution at the College of Medicine. If I do decide to go into my lectures not ready to give them adequate content, I'm not doing the students justice, am I? I'm not. So it's the same thing, even the teachers, primary school teachers, you've got to love. I, I, I always interact with primary school teachers who love their job. When I talk to them, how much are, are you paid? I mean, it's so disheartening to hear that somebody who is teaching in, in primary school is getting less than $100 in a month. How do we expect them to survive? But then you find these people, they have so much passion. They're writing all those plans for their students. They're preparing for their lessons. We need to have as a country, as you know, Gibson said, are we prepared to make this change? Are we prepared to say, I'm going to send my child to public school, is what said. I mean, I know so many ministers, people in Kamuzu's time, ministers, children who went to public school, and they were proud of that because they knew the system was working and they will make sure that the system was going to work. The reason is right now we have options. All of us sitting here who are here in Malawi, 
I bet none of us have our kids in a public institution. We don't because we don't trust it. I specifically don't trust it. I know my child is not going to get the best education. I went to a public school for the first two years of my life. Then I was privileged to go into private school. Then I went to the academy. But the point is, at the end of the day, what I got is what I always tell people is, what Camus gave to us, nobody can take it away from us. And that's what we need to do for our kids. Let's invest in their education. Let's think of the other people, not just our kids. Amos will agree with me, working in the health sector is one of the hardest things in this country. Yeah. But he made a yeah. decision. He would have gone to work outside the country. He made a decision to work in the country. He's paid peanuts for the work that he does. He's paid peanuts, if you ask him. But it's him mm. because he is patriotic. The work that he does. I mean, we saw something. He was using a, 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 what, a, phone, a phone light to do an operation because he loves what he does. So basically, all of us need to be in that position as a country to start loving ourselves and loving other people, not being selfish. Because Malawi is where we are today because people are selfish. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of resources in this country. We yeah. can move this country yeah. to, and we can build it. I mean, we can build it. Not everything is lost because the system is already in place. All we're going to do is just pick up and say, let's make them work. Mm -hmm. If you go to a government institution and you talk to people, you'll see that everything is in place. The, the planning department knows exactly the demographers. They know exactly what they what is supposed to be done. And remember from the time when we went into high school, 1993, to now, what the population has happened. And it's not in relation. It's like we the demographers do all the work. They submit their plans and nobody's looking at that. Everybody's just coming in. It's not about governments who come in, but they need to be advised by the people who are there. You know, everybody coming. Mm -hmm. So let's not start saying somebody's going to come in with their own five-year plan. If he comes in with his own five-year plan because he's going to leave afterwards, it will not work in the essence that he, he, he has to be briefed, right, with the people that are already there to say, mm -hmm. this is what the plans that were there. I mean, all these projects that are implemented, people go and open bridges and what have you, those things are already in government plans. There's no way anybody's going to tell us that I broke this thing. They're already there. Government doesn't just wake up today and say, I want to put a bridge here. I'm going to put a road here. Yes, we can divert funds every now and then. But you know what? What happens is they work according to the plan. They already have a road plan. So if we have a road plan, then things will work. But if we decide to just sit there and say, well, we're not the leaders, then nothing's going to happen. And unfortunately, we're getting old and our kids are just going to find themselves in a whole mess where nobody will want to be Malawian. Mm. <laughs> very, very, very uh, interesting. Thanks, Kama. Uh, Leo, what would you do day one in office to change this trend? Okay, I was saying day one in the office will be, I think, one of the uh, very difficult and challenging day in my life. Because I think to me, I still believe that uh, it's about leadership. You know, leadership. I think it, it's not just uh, those of guys, the Jaguera and the other one, and the, and the other guy. No, I think leadership. We have to take leadership because I think why I'm saying. Okay, why I'm saying that is. Uh, for example, uh, if me as a leader of my organization, um, I'm corrupt, for example, and uh, my people down there know that I'm corrupt, would I have uh, the audacity to tell my junior that, uh, well, don't be corrupt? No. So I think it's about the top guys taking lead in trying to set an example for the people that are following. That is why I still believe that I think uh, leadership in, on top there, our presidents and the politicians have also mm -hmm. failed us in some way. Because we already have, I think we have system. We are agreeing here that I think the mm -hmm. systems are there. That's why we're talking about systems being corrupt, I mean being 
like being corrupt or being uh, being broken down because systems are there i think what what we need is to have the willing leadership leadership that is willing to enforce that i mean those systems because i think to uh, to some extent it looks like uh, our leaders they deliberately disregard the systems that are there so that they have to take at, i mean they they have they, they know how to get to benefit out of there so still going back to leadership if if i know that well uh, when Rodrick is uh, mr Rodrick is there up there he's benefiting a lot of uh, a lot of uh, money i think uh, let we should not run away from this we a lot of things have have been an it's now well we are hearing of a lot of money have been squandered in this in in by the past government you know a lot of money we have mra we have whatever they are making a lot of money and to me i think they are making money not enough money but money that can support our social services for example i think we i think we sh we have we are being we are taxed a lot of money we're we are taxed every day the money goes to, to the to the coffers i think that money should be able because that, as it is now even in our schools the schools we, we are not child friendly I would, I would, I would, uh, firstly, I will start with child. They are not child friendly. I would, uh, we can talk about being teacher friendly or, or whatever. But in the first place, they are not child friendly. No, at least in the past, when I was coming from home, going to to my primary school, much as I didn't have shoes on me, but at least I would go to to the toilet, and um, I mean, I would go and use a toilet that was there. You know. But now you have some, even some schools which don't even have a proper, uh, maybe one toilet being used by a lot of kids, and uh, mm -hmm. that is if there is a toilet there. I've, I've gone to school, to, to some schools where you go to a school, there's only one school block there. And this, I call it a school block in, in court, because it's just, just a building called a school block. Just one, maybe just one teacher there. But you you look at the the, the 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 kids that are there. This one teacher is doubling as a teacher, a head teacher, and uh, you name it. You know. So we should the schools to me. If I'm I'm there day one, I think feeling to the other days, I should make sure. I I think I would make sure that uh, I think these places they should be, for example, schools. They should be child. Mm -hmm. I mean, child friendly. The, the child should be going there to say, well, I think if I wake up, I would rather not stay at home, but go to school. The same thing when I wake up to go and teach that, teach that kid, I should be saying, well, I should wake up, go to school, teach that kid because there are books there, there are, there are learners books there, there are textbooks there. At the end of the at, at the end of the month, I get paid at the right time, and all those things. I think that's what are the system. The, 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 the teachers should be getting paid. You know, there should be consistency. I think there is already a system. That's why we talk of uh, the, 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 the civil servants. They get paid on the twenty seventh. Why? It's because that is the day that they are supposed to get paid. That uh, they are supposed to get paid. But you go. Do you find out that instead of getting paid on the 27th, you go get paid on the on the 15th? I mean, where do you get the motivation there? You know, that's one thing. That's about the the, the school side. And I think the other thing is we need. I think the other thing I was talking about about leadership being in everyone. It's about the mindset. I think it's also the mindset that we have. You know, it's the mind because I think the past governments maybe have created us that uh well we i think something that makes us not trust each other so as well actually i think this this i'm also going back to working in collaboration for example sometimes uh because of this lack of trust we've lost that trust where i can say well i i, I think i have this potential in 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 in, in collaborating with dunga with Guadalajara, with Gibson, with Amos, with that. But then I think otherwise, well, 
should I get this little money of me, of my, uh, uh, this, my little money and uh, uh, team up with these guys? We lost trust in each other. So I think in the past, I think we used to trust each other, but now mm, we don't yeah. trust each other these days. That's why sometimes you, yeah. we have ideas, interpret ideas, we want to implement them, but when the moment we start, the way we, we are said mm -hmm. that we want to implement them, people yeah. go backwards. Why? We need to uh, we need to ask ourselves why they are so. So I can I think I have pause there. Yes, um, yeah, Mr. Ngamila, go ahead. Uh, chair, chair, I think uh, I've had uh, quite a number of uh, uh, pertinent issues that um, I thought I should support. You know, uh, there was the issue of us technocrats in government. You know, I, I, I keep hearing that all uh, oh, politicians have done this, politicians have done that. You know, politicians don't write a procurement manual. Politicians don't go out looking for quotations. Politicians work through us in these various positions that we have. I'm talking to those of us that are in these positions. Uh, you know, when we're talking of leadership today, it should be leadership that should be honest. That's what I'm saying. If you are a head of procurement somewhere, you are a head of uh, an, a, a house facility somewhere, you should be able to write your honest opinion of what you think Kamuzu Central Hospital needs to function in a particular way. Because we have also become, in my view, Politicians, in our own sense, that he, oh, you are now a director of this and this, and therefore you're saying, oh, if he, I write a, an honest opinion, I might be seen to be jeopardizing the government. But we should be providing honest advice. That's why we are employed. Yeah. That is why we are in those positions. But we have not been courageous enough, in my view, to mm. provide honest advice to those that we think are leaders. Leaders are us. You know, we advise, you know, I go to the board, um, see what Dunga knows. He comes, you know, we go to the board, uh, I have this ABCD, I need approval. It is you, we're just supporting you to implement your own idea. So we're saying, okay, yes, you have got a bright idea, uh, but we improve it ABCD. And that's what politicians do. Mm. Politicians will give you a manifesto. We want, like in this case, three meals a day. Mm. Go to Minister of Agriculture. The PS there should be able to provide solutions. Bwana, you are saying we need three meals a day. For us to achieve three meals a day, we need seed to provide to our people. We mm -hmm. need to reduce fertilizers. This is where they will get their fertilizer. Are you sure if we do this, people have three meals a day? Yes. Mm -hmm. What else do you need to support, need us to support you to achieve this? Oh, no, no, I no, need ABCD. Okay, get it and go and implement. That is leadership. That That's what I'm talking about. You see, we should not be shifting blame to whoever else is above us. Yeah. We should, in, and I think we are sufficiently qualified, in my view, in this forum, to make sure, to make sure that the politicians are tamed. Mm. It is us who can tame politicians. It yeah. is not for politicians to tame us. If that is what we allow, we are not leaders, and we, should, we will never graduate into being leaders if mm. that is our approach to work. Yeah. That is one. Uh, you know, <laughs> we should also be honest with, with ourselves that we as human beings, as Gibson, I'm a greedy person. I want this thing to, first of all, benefit me and benefit my family and whatever. Mm -hmm. That is where Bwana Roderick was saying corruption, you know, creeps in. Mm -hmm. I think we should be people that should be questioning, what is, why am I being given this allowance? I am employed to do this work. I've been called to a meeting in a capital hotel. Why should I collect this allowance? I'm just 20 meters away from capital. I can even walk. Do, you know, we also need to be here. Some of us are big, you know, you need to walk there. But you always say, oh, I'll go there collect allowance. For, for, for what? <laughs> you know, the little, little things yeah. that we should be questioning ourselves. I think we should be honest. All of us are greedy. We should start addressing these questions. 
Mm. Uh, there was another question of on policy. I think uh, I think Madam uh, Kama talked about policy. So this country, I, I don't know whether I can still be heard. Uh, yeah, yeah, we can still hear you. Uh, yes, uh, there's cool, something right? that has come up on the screen. So <laughs> yeah. you know. So, uh, on the question of policy, you know, this is a little knowledge that I acquired somewhere. Mm. Policy is not the document that we have that is gathering dust on a shelf. The definition of policy. Mm -hmm. I want us to have this definition of policy. Policy is what we wake up every day, we do we measure, we evaluate every day. If you've got a document that is written policy somewhere, you have not gone to it, you are not doing it, it is not policy. Mm -hmm. Policy is what we do every day. So I don't want to hear that, oh, we have developed so many good policies. They're not policies, they're documents. Mm -hmm. Policy is what we do every day that we will measure. You know, so we should move away from either convincing somebody that we've written a good document, but deep down our hearts, we know that we will not implement it. We are cheating ourselves. Let mm -hmm. us tell the truth. The honesty should drill down to the truth that we want to be happening. Mm -hmm. If you surely know that this document, yes, it is reading well, but for me to implement it, I think it will be ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Say so. Yeah. Say so even to the highest powers that be, and be clear that these are the reasons why I will not be implementing this thing. Mm. You know, so so let us be people that have graduated yeah. from from this. You know, understanding that we've got the good documents that were not implemented. No, 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 no. I think what we're implement. Forget policy is not a document is what you, your conviction is. A document just confirms your conviction. I wouldn't be told that you don't have a strategy. I have a strategy, it's just that maybe I've, I just haven't documented it. But what I do every day is what the strategy is. I'll tell you, in five years time, I want my company to be like this. I want my family to be like this. I want my kid to have graduated in college. That is, that is your strategy. Yeah. You really have to put it down. If you're looking for a document, then fine. You can write it down, but we shouldn't. We shouldn't disguise ourselves that we've got some documents that we're not implementing and we're causing them policy. I don't think so. Uh, finally, before council comes in, um, uh, <laughs> um, you see, uh, in today's world, we think that things are so diverse that maybe it's starting to solve them is is a huge challenge you don't know whether to talk to dr nyaka or to Roderick or to the chair himself no i think the challenges the way i see them in this country are very basic we want to provide good education to our people we want to make sure that they're going to get help if they go to hospitals we can feed them three times a day we can invest in the productive sectors. I will finish by this, that uh, uh, the company that I work for or the trust that is your own, a public trust, is, is it was set up to solve economic challenges. When we achieved political independence, we had no functioning private sector in this country. So press trust or the press group was created to say, if we want to have a bank, can we partner Barclays to set up a national bank? Mm. If we want to have people are drinking bad beer, it is killing them, Kachaso, can we have Kasbeg to come and help us do at least better beer? Can we have Coca-Cola? If, if you look at press corporation, all the companies are partnerships to make sure that the country achieves economic independence. I'll submit as follows and I'll stop. I will stop. I think he has really stopped. <laughs> I'm looking at the time, and I'm assuming that we are stopping at nine o'clock. But uh, I, I wanted just to share a few things that, uh, in terms of way forward, that goes back to the question, uh, Kama and Leo. 
Uh, first of all, the framework we have in the country is very good. We've got a very good constitution, vibrant, which provides for freedom of expression, opinion, that goes to accountability. When we talk about the discussion of program leadership, leadership, it's about accountability. We should be able to hold the leaders accountable to stop systems collapsing, to make sure that the country is vibrant. How do we do it to be knowledge? So, compared to other countries, we're in a very much posi uh, better position. We, the systems are there, the laws are there, the internet is like in Ethiopia, so we can hold our leaders accountable. But what lacks is support. When people like Daniel Buna, they did nothing in the last couple years when we were fighting for change in the country. We are not saying that Dunga should go on the streets, but we are saying when Nyaga, he, he told the country that they will, will have a problem in fighting COVID-19 in two months, when he was the president of Sadhu for Doctors and he was on Zodiac. Dunga was supposed to tell Nico, can we give Society of Medical Doctors 20 million water to provide information to the public so that we should be able to hold politicians accountable. But talking about building wealth, how do you build wealth in the people when people don't have wealth? So we, we because we have a framework where civil society can operate, we can we can talk like we are talking, we, we, we are not afraid of the politicians, we should hold politicians accountable. But politicians can only be held accountable if those politicians uh people will be able to tell them that we have done this wrong. We think you don't need to be in office, you should be removed. That can only be done if we support. So, what we like in our country is that the private sector is just eating money alone. They are not pumping money into the society. How do they, they should be pumping money to civil society? We are not talking about political civil society that is demonstrated. We are talking about education here. Can you look not pumping money into civil society organizations who work on education so that they publicize policies that are there in the education? They publicize the laws that are business. They should publicize those laws that will make you invest and make money. Because do not tell you that you make money, but does a person in Chia in Kota Kota know how to make that money? Because they, they're not giving that knowledge. You are not talking about advertising grants. For the past 12 months, John Soros, a businessman in, in, in America, funds so many organizations under open society. This is the money that the human rights defenders we should get in Malawi from the private sector. Why can not Bunga Nico pump in money to human rights defenders' coalition? Not to demonstrate on the street, but to provide information to the public on how to hold politicians accountable. We are talking about press trust here. How many times? As press trust pumping money to society, society, society of medical doctors. Why can't they do money to society, to, to, to society of medical doctors? To Nyaka and his friends, please tell us the policies on education. How do you make sure that everybody accesses uh, his services equally? So, this, this is the, the, the private sector in Mara is a big breakdown on holding politicians accountable. Because if we want politicians accountable, then we are going to get a uh, base looking for because if they don't offer the service we will tell them that i think president you are not the right people we are not publicizing the policies we are not making sure that the, the, the schools that don't have teachers are closed because that's what we like we, we like accountability the accountability is there money won't come from government it will come from people the business people who can afford to 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 give money to civil society provide information also not only them they can they have got a platform on, on social media the mainstream media where we should build a country that has got knowledge that knowledge that we that we hold leaders accountable so because of time i wanted to raise this that it's time as accountable and the private sector should be pumping money to build knowledge and also to hold politicians accountable hmm. I think I think Dunga is, uh, is 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 pulling out his checkbook actually. So let, let's uh, let's see what's the figure, Dunga. <laughs> how, how much are we dishing out? <laughs> Over to you. <laughs> well, we are not, we are not pumping anything at the moment at the point in time. <laughs> but I think uh, I think. Uh, <laughs> I think Christine makes a real good point here. I think what the politicians have managed to do is to weaken everybody and make everyone afraid of them. 
such that if Nico or National Bank or Press Corporation sees something not going in the right way, they would not risk themselves by providing a voice. But uh, really, we should throw away that fear and say we are in this boat together. If you one person messes it up, he will mess all of us. So everybody should create a voice, which is the accountability that Crispin is talking about. So I think it's an idea uh, that uh, the corporate world should really begin to think about to, to have a real voice because look, where does the money come from to fund government? Money to fund government comes from taxes and the, the corporate world pays a big chunk of that tax. So the people who should be speaking about what that money should be doing should be the corporate world. But uh, we've been very, very quiet. I don't know if Gibson knows any CEO who has spoken clearly about uh, uh, policies. I, I remember Chikawanda used to you know, speak, but uh, I don't know, not anymore. So maybe I'll start. I'll start, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think I think the moment yeah, government let's trust into civil society. Don't just build bricks and mortars or iron sheets. People need to know those iron sheets will be built when people will say we need iron sheets. They they open their mouth, come and build. Yeah. Yeah, I, I wanted to fund knowledge so that people should hold politicians accountable. Yeah, so for example, <laughs> I, I don't know which company would have written a check to HRDC in the past one year. Uh, but uh, with hindsight, we are thinking, all of us are thinking, well, yeah. <laughs> maybe HRDC <laughs> did a good job. Uh, I mean, they stood for they stood for something. Can, can so, can, I, can, I, can I respond, Council? Council, Council, with all due respect, I want. Yeah, Gibson. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, don't go there, Daniel. I think I think let us be mature in this discussion. Mm -hmm. I think let us be mature. Um, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah we can keep. <laughs> no, I, I think the point that Crispin is making, he's saying. Yeah, can, can we have a one person? Uh, okay. Can, okay, so Council Daniel, I've heard you. Uh, but when I speak, I want Roderick to come in. You know, I think he's been uh, uh, getting in quite a bit and he's been smiling all along. <laughs> <laughs> so I I want to, to mention these things, Chair. Um, Council, um, you see development work. No, no, I hear him. That's why, well, that's why I'm going. You see, development work uh, is in different stages. Uh, I don't like the solutions that come from our colleagues in the West that say that, oh, let us all focus on software. Well, these are the issues that he studies this or studies that. You know, you see the level of development, even if you've got your malaria vaccine, you are going to a village in Kosoro. If there are no health facilities there, it is of no use to have your vaccine and then not find a place where to vaccinate these people. So the, we are at different levels of development. Infrastructure in our country cuts across all sectors. You see, we cannot all be funding research, a study this, a study that. No, no, no. What we need sometimes are just basic, basic things that we need access to. When we have achieved the basics, and it should be infrastructure that will save us well, when everyone is coming with their TB control program, their malaria control program, their COVID control program, they will find a place where they can treat these people. So you see, the West will come to you to say, oh, no, 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 uh, if we, we are not funding infrastructure. I have always refused that in our sort of situation where, where we still have got kids learning under trees, we will never abandon 
infrastructure. And therefore, I will tell them that if you want to partner with me, come with your software skills, I will provide you with infrastructure. That's why you've seen that some of us are still going in that direction. Maybe I'm old school, but I still believe that if we don't but, do but it, you know, who Gibson, else Gibson, will do it? Gibson, I want to cut you short. That is uh, there is a, a, a question on the private sector. Should be providing, actually, what Daniel should be saying and what we haven't termed politicians on. And Daniel is a candidate of my very good friend, Bob Babe. <laughs> you know, the private sector should be providing solutions to politicians. Politicians don't like people that want to go to them to get favors. Politicians have got real questions. You have, they've got whole constituencies of people that are going to join. You should be going to them to say, Bana, if you want to create employment, these are the industries that we will invest in. We should not be people that are going to politicians for favors. I don't go to any politicians for favors, but let us provide solutions. You want to feed people three times a day. We have got farms. We can produce for you. Pay the price. Pay the price. Let us do the work for you. We should be providing solutions. Politicians also know that we, especially in the white collar class, are fond of, oh, put me on this board, oh, put me this chief executive. You are looking for favors. You are not providing solutions. Oh, if you do this, my kid will do ABCD. No, no, no. <laughs> I think Chris Finn wanted to say something. No, I just wanted to, to clarify to him. I think you should get the point that Daniel is saying. Uh, the private sector had decided to put all resources into one basket to support the to support the people. But he press trust because he has got bigger ears. He can put in two hundred million. Then he also puts another hundred million. Um, right, right puts another hundred million. That money can be in such a way that civil society organizations or faith-based groups can be applying money, for, can be applying that for our area, we'll focus on building knowledge for, 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 for the population to, to demand accountability. This that society organization, I say, we are going to focus on infrastructure. Another, yeah. another organization will apply that we are going to focus on uh, software development. Uh, I mean, what we're trying to say that will provide easy knowledge to people. Another application outside of medical doctors will say, we are going to build knowledge in the people and how they can access uh, a free but quality health services to the population. That's what we are talking about. We are, we, we are, we are not, I think, uh, uh, what, what our friend Ngalamina should understand that uh, for the problems that we have, we are not talking about one solution. The, the solution is not one building knowledge. We are not saying that structure is bad, but the, the private sector in Malawi should understand that the political leadership is very key for them to work well. For, for the politicians to be held accountable, they have to build knowledge into the population and also build that knowledge that the leaders are going to be held accountable. If you look at the US, all the debates on CNN, on the ABC and all that, it's the private sector that funds those, those experts and all that. Because they pump money into think tanks, they pump money into big organizations. The same in the UK. Uh, for, for, for people to be able to, to, to write good pieces uh, in the daily mail, uh, in the independent, it's, it's people, it's the private sector that funds those things. They, we, we have research institutions are funded by, by private institutions. That's what we're talking about. We want our friend uh, Gibson to, to, to make sure that press trust has got that interest when making sure they put more into civil society and the population itself. I think that's the point that Bruno is trying to raise with you. But we want to from you tomorrow. Actually, actually, Chair, I, I was not making an independent point. I was just trying to agree with Crispin to say, in as far as holding politicians accountable, private sector yeah. needs to do a bit more. That is not to mm. say that they should stop all the other good work they're doing. But yeah. they can, on top of whatever they are already doing, they could do a bit more on accountability. And I think that point cannot be taken away. You know, mm. we we holding politicians accountable, we've left it, this job to 
to certain few people who've left the job to Roderick to speak on his own. And mm -hmm. you, you know, you cannot find a corporate a corporate entity coming to say, Roderick, we, we support you here. If you think you did need to, to do a bit more work, we can actually write a check for you. The corporate world doesn't do that, but we need to do that because who pays the taxes? It us. So probably Gibson did not understand the point uh, properly, but we're not saying the rest of the work that's been done by the corporate world shouldn't be done. It should be done. Yeah. More should be done, but we should do even more on accountability. Hmm. I think you're almost looking or, or, or getting into the idea of having whether it's uh, like a, a, a development body or fund or something like, I mean, you have uh, countries, uh, you know, maybe in the Middle East where they've got, a, I think even in Libya, they had like a, a body which is a, which, which sits as a development body. And this is the one which will get, you know, the funding from the corporate. It's like, uh, it's organizing the, the, the corporate environment in terms of getting the funding, putting it together and then launching that into the different projects. I mean, of course, there's been countries where they've run into trouble with this, with corruption, whereby people have been taking that money. But uh, you, you almost have someone who is sitting on top with uh, almost like an uh, anthropological, whether that's the right word, vision of uh, getting everyone together and then putting that money into development projects or infrastructure, education and all that in the country, independent of government or anything else. because. When they sit like that, they have a long-term vision of what the country needs, needs to do and need to be. So that as governments come in and out, that is independent of what this body is doing. But that's someone who will actually coordinate and cooperate and get the funding from government, corporates, or whatever. But uh, now the, the, the other question I want to pose here is this. There is a... Chair, before you... Mm -hmm. Sorry, Chair, before you ask that question, just two seconds. Yeah. You know, we're talking about all, all these revelations about uh, corruption that happened in the past. Mm -hmm. And people are speaking on Facebook, but these are individuals. Just imagine mm -hmm. if uh, 10 top CEOs in Malawi did a 10 minute press briefing to say, we don't agree with this. And we would like mm -hmm. to see these cases concluded in the next six months. Just imagine what that would do. Mm -hmm. But yeah. the, the, the so, so that is quiet. Dan, 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 can I take you? Yeah. Yeah. We are going to have that happen. Um, say we are going to find special courts to finish all cases by December. We are pumping in 300 million to make sure that you have got prosecutors, investigators, and the to sit every day to December. Here's the check. That's what we expect. Just imagine mm -hmm. what people at State House will be thinking that day. They'll be running. <laughs> 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 so yes, I like to. I would like to agree with the point of uh, taking accountability to the next level and getting the private sector really work properly. I think that would be an interesting uh, effort, and I think I would support that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, if spares uh, contribute yeah. towards that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I think that, that that would be lovely. I think so. I, I, I think I think mine is just in agreement with uh, with. Um, Crispin, you know, where even in the in the, in this world, in the Western world, most of the things that actually happen are done by uh, the private sector. You yeah. know, and they cause and they pump in money into that. We haven't seen this uh, uh, happen in Malawi. Now, going back to your question of what are you going to do on the best day if you're made president, I always refer to myself as a uh, as a student of history. When Kamuzu appointed his first uh, cabinet, and I think he had taken the Ministry of uh, Industry. And he, one journalist asked him, asked him, why did you take the industry or commerce? You know, his answer was like, because I trust my boys, but I do not trust them enough to actually fight the temptation and the lure of money in the face of corruption. That's mm -hmm. why I want to, uh, to look into the development of this country uh, myself under this ministry. So corruption remains one of the issues that we have had, and we have seen most of the cases that uh, uh, Dan is talking about now, the recent ones coming out, it's all to do people being enticed with a lot of money. You know, If we can get people to fight this, or as he's saying, 10 CEOs, and, and Crispin, they don't even actually have to pump in money. I mean, like Dan uh, Gibson, a few other guys, 
come there and do a, a press conference and just say that, look, we are captains of the industry. We would love to see Malawi move because it gives our, it makes our efforts, you know, like um, not worthwhile trying to run our corporations in an environment which is not conducive. Even mm -hmm. with pumping in money, just the words and us Malawians seeing them there, you know, five, ten CEOs saying that enough is enough. Believe you me, it can, you know, as he asked, what will happen at Capitol Hill? People will be shaking, you know? So it's not only the money, but I agree with you entirely that our corporate world has been lackluster in terms of, uh, you know, pumping in money or fighting causes and all those kind of things. I think maybe our generation needs to change. Last one that I wanted to say, you know, sometimes people talk about Chikawanda as one of the best guys who have ever come, but it's us educated people as well who are destroying things. You look at Press Corporation, when he was taking it over in 2002, it was such a very good, you know, but piece by piece he dismantled it, you know, to where now he would sell all this, you know, like stripped assets, stripped it. Well, I'm not, a, you know, like in that industry, but us educated people as well, we don't do favors to our country because we always say that you know like maybe what is happening in the west is the best mm -hmm. as you know saying that let's not take solutions that are done in the in the west by saying that you know we need to privatize everything and all those kind of things so that's what has actually caused you know like press corporation the way it is now so but i agree with uh, most of the things that people are, are, are talking here yeah but, but you see there is understanding the, the real problems and the things that are on the ground. Uh, that understanding is there. I mean, if, uh, I, I bet you if you go back 10 years or even 20 years, there are people who have talked about all these things we are talking about now, about the, having good education and all of that. That's like the, the reality. But it seems to me the reality and the understanding is there, you know, but it almost feels like implementing it and getting it done is the fantasy side of things. So when you when you think about the, the, these things, we talk about, you know, we should have good infrastructure, good education and all of these things. But what do you think is, is the actual, that, that almost seems like fantasy, yes, we should have that. What is the, the reality or, or do you think in, the re, in, 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 in reality, are these things going to happen or can they happen? Yeah. That's uh, that's uh, I guess uh, the question to, to pose. What 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 do you think? Because people uh, people uh, have talked about this for a long time. How long is we, we have clocked to two hours? How long? Uh, is yeah yeah we we have as much as we need. The studio is open for six hours, so everyone everyone should have their say as much as they want until we close. So the last man standing. <laughs> Um, okay, um, I mean, I, I'll say it and then I'll drop off because I have, I need to talk to somebody also on, on yeah, accountability. Yeah. Yeah. I'll extend the discussion outside, I'm talking to somebody also on accountability. Hmm. Uh, the, I'm going back to my point that in a country like now, we have got a lot of opportunity because when you look at our framework, legal framework, it's, it's what is killing other countries. You see Zimbabwe now, if you want to try to voice we stand up and say something. We're going to be crushed by the security forces. We don't have that in Malawi. We, we, we have that technique whereby you can stand up and talk. So there is there that we can achieve something. But uh, what we are lacking uh, is the taking a step here. Of course, looking at the last 26 years, we have achieved something that uh, we, we did not let back in, get a team and open team. I think that is an achievement. Uh, we can't talk about, about, about him because he fell along the way. Came this banda, there are issues about the, I mean, even her, the quality of appointments, the issue of cash rate and all that. And she lost elections. That should be plus because we, 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 we should be able to say, I think she did not perform. That's why people uh, vote for her. And then we have Peter Tiger. He has lost elections because we believe uh, people say he's the way he's running the country. It's not inspired, um, not as an individual, but the policies. And then people say, well, we work for somebody uh, in power. And then what, the, the new leadership, we, we have to take steps right now to make sure that even the new leadership is held accountable from, from day one. Because it's, it's the only way whereby we will be able to assess them 
an ongoing thing they are not achieving. But that, that may not be enough. There are also fundamental problems that were inherited from Kamuzu and all his leaders, the issues of tribalism and nepotism, which always keep on pulling back because instead of having just a discussion as we are having now, then somebody just throw, throws in the tribal card and then the, 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 the discussions get drilled. Now we are even at risk of a religious card throwing in all that game because I'm Rodrik and, and I'm a Muslim. Because we should, we should be able to watch those things because those things can drill us. They look very simple, but if we are not careful, they can drill us. So reality is there, but uh, I don't know with patriotism. I feel very comfortable on issues of patriotism because it's a white thing. But I think being able to to be to build that knowledge to people to be able to differentiate between an obvious wrong and and an obvious right, we should be able to say uh, Dunga is wrong, and not say he's not wrong because he's my friend or because we are together in school, and he should also be saying, oh, but in Mr. Swand, I think we are wrong. Uh, uh, he should not be saying, oh, I can't say that because. Uh, maybe he will be disappointed, but how can how can such a person say that? Because those are some of the challenges that he, we we are we are suffering from, or that the challenges we are encountering as a country. That sometimes we are afraid to say this is right or to say this is wrong because we think uh, we will make somebody unhappy. I think Duma gave an example that imagine if C was with one voice, then probably they are thinking, oh, maybe on my door, will be the door of the company next day, because they think that in 2009 we didn't pay tax. The other thing that are being considered, because we have some challenges as, as, as a country that we need to watch for. So reality is there, we can achieve things, but there are problems that we need to sort out, the challenges that we need to sort out, and try to make sure that we build this country that we are aspiring. Because right now, it was feeling in mind that all of us are aspiring for a country where people can do business, People can share knowledge on business. People can make sure that schools function. They, they, everybody is put in the right position. The, the people who are education expert will be given that responsibility. Promotion will be based because that person is performing. We know that a doctor who operates using a, a torch from a phone will, will be promoted for doing that. He will get an award. But everybody forgets that story. Not even an award, not even an acknowledgement that that they did this way. There are other things, and it's not only in health, it's only not education, even in agriculture, even in trade. Even, I mean, all the things are like, like being done in such a way whereby we are not following certain systems where everybody can say, I am there, please recognize me. Please, I'm lagging behind, push me. These are the challenges that are So, the idea can be achieved, but we need to sort out the challenges we have. Challenges. Cool. Well, we've uh, talk, talked about uh, um, a, a lot of stuff now. So, as we wrap up, yeah, let's put this scenario. Kilima and Chakwera are sitting right next here. What is our one minute or two minute message? What do we want them to do to reverse this trend? So, start with Dunga. What would you say to Chagwera Chilima now or to put on their agenda for the next, let's say, five years or even a longer term vision of what they should do to reverse you know, this trend and provide leadership? Well, I think everybody understands now that our biggest problem at the moment is corruption. And we need to send a message that corruption has no place yeah. anywhere in our system. Mm -hmm. So, you probably saw a clip last week which was circulating. Someone was giving an example of Singapore to say, for Singapore to develop, they they created an example right at the top. They punished yeah. the top dogs. Yeah, that's true. So, Chiriman Chakwera mm -hmm. should set the example of zero tolerance of corruption right at the top. Yeah. Not just not just the previous government, but in their own government. If, if anybody tries to mess up, make him an example. Yeah. If, they don't, if they don't have someone to be an example in their own government, then pick someone in the past and make them a real example. This idea of arresting someone for 18 hours and then that's the end of the case, you know, it's not, people begin to know that, <laughs> people begin to know that these things don't go anywhere. You know, you, you, you so and forget about lose. anything else. Forget about forget about roads. Forget about uh, whatever. Just 
pick good examples of corruption fight and send a message to say corruption who have no space. We'll have too much money. We'll not know what to do with the money. I, I can promise you that. That's true. Thank cool. you. So corruption message. Um, excuse me, I, I want to leave, but can I just say one, yes. one or two things? Yeah. Yes. Message. So I, I think I can just expand on what Daniel said. Uh, that let's use a few people as examples. But I think the other thing that we can also do is is to translate, you know, that level of corruption to things that people can relate to. So, for instance, if we're, we're able to recover the monies from, I mean, I mean, from uh, the incidences of corruption, as the case is, we actually fund physical structures. For example, we can complete the 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 Mbelwa University, for example, uh, with that money. The money that 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 completes that is the money that we've recovered from corruption. You see, now people start understanding what is the cost of of corruption. Because if you talk about billions. Uh, someone in the villages they really don't understand what what how much money that is so if they can be able to translate that perhaps it, it will also give lessons uh to generations to come that this kind of corruption is worth these structures that we keep because we've recovered that money and we've translated it to uh the, the, these structures i think that that would be my contribution at, at this stage but if it were me uh in that position the first day what would i do perhaps i'll do nothing Maybe after a hundred days or so, then that's when I will figure out how. That's so, uh, fair enough. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll remember that when you are campaigning to become president, <laughs> make our own minds up, yeah, whether to elect you or not, based on that statement. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, Gibson. So the we are wrapping up, and everyone is giving their uh two minutes or whatever a uh, time you are sitting in front of chakwera chilima what is it that you would like to see them do over their term or even a longer term vision to reverse this trend so over to you uh chair i have already appeared before them uh, or before the government <laughs> uh -huh. uh, i'm not saying anything that is not confidential yeah uh, as I said, I'm a public servant. All what I want the people in the service to do mm -hmm. is to exactly wish for every Malawian mm. everything that they're accessing from government. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if they are sending their kids to a private school, let everyone send their kids there. Yeah. You know, if they're accessing public, I mean, private hospitals, let everyone. Send their kids. They should be wishing that for every Malawian. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, maybe those are lofty ideals, but uh, I guess for me, I think what pains me most, having worked almost entirely in, in the social services in this country, is to make sure that we bring back the spirit of public service, selfless service mm -hmm. to the public service. We should invest in our people out there we should not see them as secondary citizens or third or whatever citizens they're just like they are much more capable of helping to progress this country to to some level you see we are better off prospering together we've got our own fund manager daniel dunga here he wants more clients yeah. If we are all middle income, he will be much more happier to save all of us <laughs> than just to have Mr. Separa sending a few dollars from there. <laughs> you know, he, he you know, you see what I mean. We should see the sense. Yeah. We should see the sense mm -hmm. as a country yeah. in having a selfless public service. Um uh you uh, and okay i am of the conviction i will repeat this i'm of the conviction is that uh, we in this age group we should demand to be the leaders of today yeah. the president will never write any cabinet paper i can guarantee you that actually the papers are being drafted by us oh no 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 you want to do this oh well quickly we prepare something 
we should be the leaders convincing what you call politicians. To me, they're just your leaders. They're your board members there. Yeah. They are waiting for ideas from us who have been well educated in the institutions that have been put there. And you guys that are in the diaspora, it's time to come back and help us here. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we need thousands of people. To, you know, the public service, the president now is struggling to find 490 people to be board members. You think mm -hmm. where is he going to find them? He's got embassies all over the world to fill. You think he, he will just be feeding people? You know, we have to help. We yeah. have to help. We should not be seeking, you know, favors, as I said, but we should be providing solutions. This is what I think the selfless public service requires. Mm -hmm. And if we do that, if we prosper together, this is a map in Pane, good oy, Angara Miranazo Zambin, the Arias, the Kumuzazika Pempa Wangara I mean, really. No. Yeah. Everybody should be self sufficient. That yeah. way we'll have developed our country. Yeah. I stopped there, Chair, and what uh, on the internet, you almost in Napanga invest in. So we. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're still struggling with internet, you see? <laughs> but, but the thing is, the, the environment should be conducive yeah. to people who want to come and do internet. Because I imagine... No, the environment, people. don't talk of the environment as if it's uh, something uh, mm -hmm. out of this world. It is us, what is it that we want? What yeah. is it that you want? Yeah, you know, we should make the environment for ourselves. Define it for ourselves. Define and then it. let us see, you know, see if we can achieve that. This is the message. We should not be thinking that there is a higher power somewhere that has got supernatural powers to mm. do this. It is us. You Walk see, into these offices. Let us do it. This <laughs> is the message that I would like to hear because for me, I've got big yeah. ambitious plans. You know, my yeah. plan is not... Is is beyond my generation. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a, a almost a five hundred year plan, but I, I would like at least to make that small step of, you know, to to get it started. You know, I would like to to see uh, big brand new districts or regions emerge from Malawi. Yeah, <laughs> the fund manager is smiling there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I would like to see that, and I, I'm already developing the plans and i'll be coming to you guys i want to put the partner that's why i talk about collaboration and partnership and all of that because we need yeah. to have uh, plans and things that are beyond ourselves you know and that is that is me so yeah i think uh, I, I i i like the message gibson that uh, we are the leaders we are the guys yeah. to make these things happen where we want the, the country to go, we can initiate those changes, those kind of things. And and uh, it, 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 it's actually befitting when you say we are in our 40s now. I mean, who else are you looking at? There was that uh, guy in uh, uh, I was it in Zimbabwe who uh, MDC was leading MDC, he could have become president at the age of, he was about uh, 40 or thereabouts. So this is the age where we should be president or so, you know, ministers. Or, running things so we can't yes, then you, are you still looking for a leader yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no, no. we are the ones no but alex <laughs> alex, <laughs> alex um from my side to wrap up uh from my side yeah i just stress on what Daniel said. Mm -hmm. uh, I think who have studied Singapore, okay, when yeah. Lee Kuan Yew was setting up Singapore, the first thing that he actually did is what Dan said. He made an example of the people, the first few people who were corrupt. Yeah. Uh, he made an example on yeah. them. Uh, his fight against corruption was so intense that there is a case of one senior minister who was close to him and uh, he was found to be corrupt. What he did was uh, he hanged, he actually hanged himself before even the authorities could get to him. So yeah. he corruption such a shameful act. And that's where you see Singapore is today. Now, mm -hmm. for the Chilima, the Chakwera Chilima presidency, 
to to actually change the course of or, or the history of Malawi in terms of development. They need to make this their number one priority. Priority, yeah. Tendency of um, uh, arresting people for eighteen hours and then and then we don't hear anything uh, where we want to grab the headlines or have the heat on social media. Will not take us anywhere. But yeah. I've been in government for one month. So maybe we should give them, you know, like more time. There's a lot of that have that have to be done. Uh, but really, truly, corruption is where they need to start. If we get corruption sorted, Dan said we've got so much money. We've got so much money in the system that we wouldn't even know what to do with it. You know, mm. but corruption remains a scourge on our society and a deterrent to development. So to answer your question, it really truly is corruption that they need to focus on. Focus on, yeah? Yeah. Wow. Chair, yeah. one word before you wrap up. Yes, yeah. One mm -hmm. word is leadership. Leadership. We yeah. should not look for leadership elsewhere. Uh, these issues around corruption, around integrity, mm -hmm. I think it's incumbent on us. Corruption is a two-way exercise. Yeah. You know, we, especially as the people from the private sector who want a lucrative contract, were the first ones to approach a public servant, mm. you know, with the, with the inducements. Yeah. You know, that's why I'm saying integrity is key in these things. And the, we shouldn't be transferring blame to anyone. We've got ourselves to blame yeah. for these yeah. things. So it is good that uh, I participated. Yes, I've missed some, some points, but... Uh, but I think so far so good, and, uh, and I wish you well, all of you. Yeah, no, this is this is really really good, and uh, uh, thank you very much, you guys, for you know making the effort. Uh, you know, for for me, I almost think we should we should do this. These are like think tanks, you know, in a way. These will be like a digital assets stored somewhere people can access and understand the things and the problems and the issues that people and leaders are thinking out there where you know the administration or the leadership could pick up the points and make the changes and things that should uh, should, should really be going forward to make a, a difference in people's lives going forward so it's really been been good to to capture the issues and understand some of the things that people would like to to see but uh, for me key is uh, as gibson said that leadership but also uh, making the environment conducive for when people want to take that initiative and uh, put that leadership on themselves to make sure they don't hit all these buffers of corruption and uh, things, then they, that hinders the development. You know? So, after, yeah. So, Dan, any last word? Or otherwise, we, we wrap up. And Dan, just ask them when are they coming back to help us? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, I, 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 I am definitely coming back. Like I said, uh, I have big ambitious plans, you know, and uh, I, I, I know much of yes, massive, massive plans. No, uh, don't answer before I ask you. Mm. Don't answer, Alex, before I ask. Let me ask you, as Gibson has asked me to, to say, when are you guys coming back? Gibson, uh, Gibson sent... Uh, an advert a few weeks ago or last week press agriculture you know press agriculture can change this country in a big way and we the guy mm. to run it is Roderick Day, but he, i don't think he has even applied so <laughs> so, <laughs> so if if you really believe in this country come there's a space at press agriculture you can you can change this country from that position i mean you know everything to do with agriculture Roderick. yeah exactly. so I, I like I would like to agree with Gibson that uh, we've always been taught to look up to some people. Even yeah. in our forties, we are looking up to someone. But really, tomorrow has arrived. We are the ones. And we yeah. should stop looking up to anyone. We are the ones to to make the change. So, you know, Gibson, thank you for that. Yeah. Uh, and from tomorrow we'll we'll try to make our contribution yeah. felt. Thank you. Mm. Yes, thank you. thank you. Thank you very much, guys. It's really been a, a good uh, conversation. And um, yeah, we'll uh, 
Uh, yeah, maybe we have uh, these uh, regular catch-ups at some various points. Just bring heads together and just have like a round table, see how things are going. But for me, collaboration is key. And, you know, that's why I brought you know, us guys together here because someone has to be doing something. Someone has to be taking things somewhere because without that coordinator, everyone is just working for themselves. Because I'm sure if I brought a, a project or something that I take initiative to lead and I want something from Gibson, I want something from Dunga, I want something from Roderick. I'm going to take that initiative to make sure you guys give me that. And that is on me. Yeah. If you guys don't, that's you know on you. But given the, you know, the understanding and the message that you guys are putting across, the thinking and the mindset is of the same. And if someone doesn't take that leadership, We'll just end up in 20 years' time. We'll have another podcast like this. We'll talk about exactly the same thing. Yeah. And nothing has happened. Yeah. <laughs> and nothing has happened. We we'll see where did the things go wrong, guys? Or even yeah. things would have gotten worse. Yeah. So we need to start uh, making those changes and that progress and collaborating. I'll be bringing a, a competitive, a new internet company to improve things here. And where there is a loop of problems in the law or competition things, I want you guys to help me to change that so we can bring internet to everyone here so we don't have any of these issues and things. But, you know, there will be real problems and challenges. And even if uh, they, are, they will not be solved in my lifetime or our lifetime, but at least we make that first step and then we can leave it to other people. Like you are saying, Gibson, a policy document just sitting on the shelf is not of any use. But if you open one page, at least you're one page less than, you know, uh, uh, the other pages. And you keep going until, you know, even if it's not you, someone else will get to the end and things get done. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool. Anyway, thank you very much, guys, for the contribution. So, like I said, I will probably be looking to make these conversations round tables at some regular points. So I'll be looking for you guys to come on. Maybe we can bring even other people outside of uh, the KA 93, maybe leaders of other sections that you guys think can help to form up these, uh, uh, these discussions and things. And my aim is at some point to, to, to have something tangible that can make a difference in these forums because in this modern age look at what we've done here we can make policy decisions we can just on zoom where, where everyone is, is is in different places and make things so we need to also take advantage of the technologies and things because barriers are less in this modern age you know people can just have a link and 10 people are talking and making decisions just like that you know so we need to be taking advantage of those and I'm going to play my part, and you guys have shown that you will too by coming on and contributing on this forum. So for me, I really appreciate that. So I'll finish with the final word to wish you all the uh, uh, Mubarak. I remember you, you, I, I used to go and take uh, uh, meat, you know, in, in Daja at the mosque. And I, I, would, I would go around once, and I would probably go around four or five times. <laughs> And the thing is, they knew what I was doing, but they were still just letting me. So, <laughs> <laughs> so but right. that was good times. So, all right, I will not take uh, much thank else you. of your time, guys, but thank, thank you, you very much. Yeah. We'll catch up soon, yeah? Okay. Right. Dan, it was nice to see you guys. Yeah. Cheers. It was nice to see you. Yeah, yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Uh, Bye.